folks. Uh, you are watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. I'm Mike Morales. Here is Southern, Southern, sunny Southern California. I can't even say that anymore. That guy out there is? <laughs> Austin in Youngstown, Ohio. Are you freezing yet? You, did you guys get snow yet? Snow on the ground here, yeah. Wow. Snow on the Wait. ground. Hey, so so the welcome to 2022. Uh, Happy New Year! Uh, you you now have you now have the Cleveland Guardians as your baseball team, and the first day that they that they opened the shop, the sign fell off. <laughs> so yeah, it's always a good sign when uh, the first day of free agency, there's a player that has a larger payroll than you do. <laughs> One guy. And, oh, the and, problems with Ohio. <laughs> well, you know, it's oh, and and believe me, one of the owners of the Indian, or I'm sorry, the Guardians, is running for Senate here. So, oh no, <laughs> all his time's going to be spent trying to get elected to the Senate rather than figure out getting us an outfielder with a bat. But Ooh. it is what it is, you know. Um, maybe they'll make some moves and. We, we have a very strong pitching staff, but we'll see what happens. I wasn't a fan of the Guardian's name. I wasn't against the, the change and, and any of the reasons behind the change. I simply think that there were a couple other good options out there uh, besides making everything into an Avengers movie. So No, they made it all into a roller derby uh, match. Cause, cause that's which, what uh, yeah, which, which they settled um, somehow. But Well, yeah, it, it cost a lot of money. Uh, to settle that, uh, yes. Well, the, I, I think their initial offer was something like four or five grand. Which, you know, if, if a major league baseball team throws at you after you've had a copyright for sixteen years, I'd tell them, you know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> carry on, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> it it costs it costs Cleveland a lot more than that. Uh, as a matter of fact, you you should be friends. You should be friended up with a guy named um, and his last name is Lust. And I'm friended up with him on Twitter and also on LinkedIn. He's a, he's a um, he is a sports lawyer. He is actually a specialist in sports law, and he has a great um, he has a great podcast called um, uh, uh, what's it called? Conduct Detrimental is called, is that's the name of the of the. You really need to go friend him up. Um, uh, uh, I think his name is Rick Lust. I'm probably wrong with that. Anyway, the man has completely changed the idea of sports law and he covered that and oh when he brought that to, when it, the reason i knew about it was because he brought it up to you know uh, uh, it was on my my feed and i didn't know it was going to be such a big deal and i can't believe cleveland did what they did they did, can't they hire somebody who can use google really really uh, and and you know the 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 details of this are already out in the open but they're all they really accomplished was they paid the roller derby team. There are now two Cleveland Guardians teams, the roller derby team and the Major League Baseball team. Well, you know, they're going to have to have roller derby night at, at, at Cleveland Stadium. They're, they're just going to have to do that. They could race the hot dogs around and, and, and yeah, there do you something go. like that. Yeah, I, that I, I don't know. But yeah, uh, anyway. You know. anyway. But tonight, we're not going to do any of that. We're going to be tasting and dissecting. Carrera Tequila. We have flipped over the Blanco. We love the Reposado. This is the Añejo. It is going to be the next big thing, ladies and gentlemen. We're telling you now. We're going out on a limb. We're just going to say if you're a friend of G4, if you love Tapatio, this is the lost cousin, Eduardo Camarena. It's a, it's a micro distillery. It's got seven brands coming out of it. One of them is Frida Kahlo. If you're a Frida Kahlo fan, you know how good this stuff is. So this is the Añejo. We're going to pour it. We're going to taste it. We're going to give you the ins and outs. I just broke the seal off of mine. It is a twist top, which is great. I, I'm so a fan of those. I have a Glen Cairn, which I'm going to use tonight. And I think, uh, I think Jim, you, you're going to join me on that one, huh? Yes, yeah. I will. Shout out to my friends in Dingle, Ireland. And and um, we, I did something really that I don't normally do on camera. I actually had to pour myself another serving. I was using a Stasso Jarrito. It's yeah. that good. 
It's we just, stopped recording a podcast. We just started drinking. We were just like, all right, this is great. This is, we're just drinking. <laughs> um, this is this is. I'm telling you, folks, this is going to be the next big thing, and you're gonna you've heard it here first on sipping off the cuff. Again, beautiful legs and tears. It's got a much deeper gold color. Uh, what does the bottle say? How long is it, this one being aged? Uh, tw- Twelve to. 15 months, and I'm kind of surprised. It, it's somewhat light for an Anejo, I think, that goes that long, but they're also using virgin oak on this. Oh, okay. So this coloration is all tannin from the, the virgin oak. Well, as I've said before, if I know anything about the Camarena family, about Felipe and Carlos, is that they're agave growers. I would imagine that Eduardo is also an agave grower. Because the quality, the complexity in that Blanco only comes with, with, with a mature, full of sugar agave. This is not, that's not an agave that's being harvested at five years, four years, three years. That's not happening. Yeah, these have some age on them. Absolutely. And yes, it is coming out of Arandas, the, the Camarena. If you know anything about the Camarena family, uh, they were one of the first settlers of Arandas uh, from Spain. So um, it figures that they would be all spread out all over that region, that area. It's got the same body to it. Yep. Very consistent on the body, yep. the legs and tears, um, even the coloring too. I mean, it figures that they, it's interesting that they would use the, the, the virgin barrels because I know Felipe likes to use these ancient barrels. Um, they're using maybe, maybe this water. this the goal of this was to have that expression have a lot more of the terroir off the agave on it and not have the char and the the bourbon influence really let this come through as the agave yeah yeah it's very agave forward both the blanco and their posada were just delightful yeah oh my god wow This nose has not lost any of the core characteristics of the Blanco nose, the Reposado nose. It still has that zesty agave citrus. This one just has picked up a little bit of that sweet spice, a little bit more of the wood, a little bit more of the, and, and I'm catching just a touch more alcohol coming through now because it's that 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 zest is, has now turned into a, little bit more of a delivery vehicle for the alcohol than the, the Blanco had. I think it's converted also from from uh, um, like an orange, like I said, orange blossom on the Reposado. It's now a much, uh, much more like orange oil uh, that you oil, would get. Yeah, right. Yeah, that you would get. Uh, I have a lemon tree in the backyard and you can pluck the leaves off the lemon tree and rub them on your hands. And that's the like lemon oil. And that's what this is. It's like an orange oil. Uh, yeah. So it's it's a it's a bit deeper, and and you know that was it, what it was designed to do. That's that's just a natural that's just a natural evolution. Yeah. If you, ever, if you ever express an orange peel over a, a drink and you catch a little bit of that vapor in the air, that's exactly yeah. what this has carried the the zest and the sweetness with it. That's just gorgeous. Yeah. And and the more the more we uh, the more I, I dig into it, like the more layers of depth it yeah. has. And I'm sure like the repo, this is gonna open up after we taste it and, and give this a little bit more air. The nose is gonna change on it, but it's gonna it, this has kept the same base characteristics across all three expressions. Yep. Yeah, it has. Well, I'm ready to dive in if you are, because because I'm excited. Let's do, Let's do it. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dang. Ah. Wow. 
What a great finish on that. Just boom. That was like how a does mic. This have, that's a mic yeah. drop. But how does this, I mean, you, you expect a bourbon barrel to impart that kind of complexity of the wood and, and, and the spice that comes with it and the natural sugar out of the wood. This picks it all up. This this has got a, I, the 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 white pepper part of the blanco came back on this, but now it's been accented for me by other spice in the middle. Right, right. It, it, it and it is it, it has kind of become more complex in the middle, and then really has that spicy, hotter cinnamon, but but with with a little built-in sweetness behind it, it and it and it finishes nice and long. Jeez. And the nose is changing. Yeah. A little bit more of that muted cinnamon, little little floral cinnamon, almost like a vanilla cinnamon. Yeah, it's it's uh, actually quite floral. It's uh it's yeah. it's, it's, it's almost it's interesting that it, that for an añejo it has a much lighter nose than your typical añejos that would have a much 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 more depth. You know, there's no dried fruit, there's no none of that. Uh, there's not even anything tropical that I would that I could that I could detect. It's just it's just all plant, really. Wow. And the depth on it is there's that initial kind of baked spice sweetness right at the beginning, and then it comes with that full rush of all the spice and the wood mm. and the pepper. And the agave for me comes out a little bit more in the middle because I think that spice is carrying it mm -hmm. and it's magnifying it because you get a little bit of that vegetal undertone mm -hmm. under the spice. And I think having wood that's virgin oak is, is going to help you there. But, you know, they, they definitely know what this plant is supposed to do when it gets out of the ground. And I think they're letting it do that. Yeah. Very yeah, much in this. This is, um, yeah, that mid palate, the, 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 where that's where the agave appears is that mid, yeah. mid palate, middle of your tongue. The, 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 the base sweetness of the repo has moved up front and, and, and then the, the agave has kind of hit the middle with the spice. But, but the way that that happens is it's not blowing up like the reposado or the, the Blanco did with the white pepper. It's there. But it, it carries a little bit of that agave that's bringing it down just a touch, and then just a wonderful finish on this. It's it's you know the mouthfeel has has carried through. The mouthfeel did its job because this is really the more passes that we have, and and you know uh, I I didn't rinse or anything between between takes. Um, has this this thing just naturally coats your palate the way it's supposed to and and the more the more passes you have the more you can detect it's this agave has got to be 10 years old yeah it's got to be old it's got to be like eight to ten years old i mean literally eight to ten and i don't know what the bricks count is i'm going to say it's got to be over 24. it wouldn't surprise me if the bricks count is even higher uh i know that carlos is very proud of some of the you know it's almost like if you're getting 30 bricks nobody's going to believe you right but carlos consistently gets over 24. he just doesn't say it you know after a while you get to the point where you're just showing off and nobody's going to believe you anyway so i'm going to say i'm going to go out on a limb and say this has got to be eight to ten years old for sure um and the bricks count's got to be I just think the depth of the plant and the terroir are in here more than you would get. And I, I, I actually like the fact that they haven't put in a barrel that's going to impart anything else on this because it comes through. This flavor comes through. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't need to have the old bourbon or the old ancient whiskey barrels like, like Felipe gets. Um, wow, sounds freaking amazing. Yep. And yeah, the more it opens up, now I'm getting a little faint vanilla on the nose maybe even a, like a little honeysuckle like a just a but, yeah. but, but the floral of the orange has now yes. become a little bit sweeter yes. floral that's not that's it. citrusy it's honeysuckle that's it because it i want uh, vanilla wasn't like 
still didn't hit me, but honey, honey does. Honey hits me, and a honeysuckle would be would be right there. I'm probably gonna it's, have to take a clear after this. <laughs> yeah, I know, huh? I'm getting itchy now. That's because yeah, right. I need to shave probably, but um, okay. Here's my sixty-four thousand dollar question to you, because we we are going to come up with a cigar, um, uh, a cigar centric um, uh, magazine issue uh, that is planned for for this year, twenty twenty-two. Um, you are a cigar maven, one of our cigar mavens on on the team. What would you, what would you do? Now, uh, by the way. Uh, uh, one of the other previous uh, brand owners sent me, uh, kind enough to send me, uh, Juan de Leon sent me a, a, a couple of Camachos, and you were exactly right. They are perfect with an Añejo or with coffee because they're very robust, okay? Now, and, and probably more so than what I'm used to because I, I, ha I, I tend to lean toward Nicaraguan because that's my heritage and because I just prefer that, that flavor profile. What would you pair this with if you had to pair it with a cigar you're going to take it to you know if you were going to take that this to your cigar club what would you say that they should what would you recommend for them this is a bold anejo i mean this is a this is a and i'm not going to say it's overwhelming but it, it it is a there's a depth to this flavor and it is not shy in your mouth so you have to have something that's not going to be overwhelmed by it but you also need, I think, something that's going to complement it. And I would probably go with something that's got a slightly oilier wrapper, maybe a little bit where that where the where the smoke is going to hold a little bit because this coats your palate and stays. So you're going to need that that cigar to do the same thing. And I, I you know, maybe a an Ecuadorian wrapper on on some Nicaraguan long fillers or a San Andres, a, a Mexican. Wrapper, I, I think a Rocky Patel Sun Grown Maduro, um, or um, an El Travador um, Maduro would would do well with this. A, a, but but you got to have something that's gonna hold up to the flavor profile, but but have a little bit of that oil to kind of coat you the same way that this does, because this hangs and, and in the best way possible. This has a, a long finish and then it has an aftertaste that kind of lingers but it's a beautiful light tingle you need something that stands up so i'm gonna say rocky patel sun-grown maduro or an el travador um maduro probably not a habana but something that's got some a little bit of depth a little bit of oil uh and a little bit of earthiness to it and 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 oil that the smokes a little bit thicker and, and, and a little bit bolder to complement this. That's a that's a tough call for me because I, I really you, know, you got obviously you and, and the other uh, two gentlemen that are on uh, on our smoking team uh, have a little bit more, you know, uh, 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 experience, you know, a wider palette when it comes to the cigar pairing. Um, I kind of just lean toward I, I'm, I'm a dabbler when it comes to that, you know, because I'm I'm lucky if I get you know, a time one once a month to be able to carve out enough, uh, you know, an hour to go smoke a cigar. And I have I say a this every time, man. It's research. You got to make you got to make a part of our process here. It's research. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and 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 I uh, I'm actually friendly with a with a couple of brand owners who who are cigar smokers, and they say, you know, we we get work done when we're smoking outside the patio. We're 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 answering emails and things like that. And I got to really do that i gotta get away from the computer and, and just go out and i do i i mean you know but again we're with you well not this one <laughs> i mean i need a new computer this one's this one's melting uh <laughs> I mean, it's a long story but yeah no i can do a lot of you know a, a lot of dictation on my phone and things like that and i, and I do on occasion I'll, I'll go out and uh, i'll let the cat go play in the in the yard and you know and and smoke a cigar but uh, it's I gotta do more of that more often because you guys are really, you know, this is this is so complex that if you pair it with the to me if you pair it with the wrong cigar, you can either you can either fall short of an ideal pairing, or you can 
overdo it and go completely over the top and you'll lose you'll you'll lose the 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 tequila because there's so much complexity in this tequila that it deserves to be paired properly or you're just gonna as we say you just gonna you're gonna blow it okay and right yeah it's so you know there's so much gonna kill a connecticut wrapper um but like an Oscuro, a real dark Oscuro wrapper is probably going to be too much flavor against flavor. But, but you know, an, an oily Maduro wrapper or something that's just got a little bit more earthiness, maybe a little bit more chocolate and spice rather than, than coffee and spice or maybe a little bit of leather uh, on the flavor will go very well, I think, with this because even as bold as it is, it's complex in 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 its totality, but the flavors are very simple. They're, they're very easy to pick up when you're tasting them, and I, I I think you need a cigar that kind of complements that a little bit. But this will blow the lighter, less full body cigars out of the water. But if you get a real heavy bomb of a cigar, an Oscuro wrapper, or a dark dark wrapper, it's probably going to be too much with this, and it's just going to overwhelm you. There's too much yeah. going on there. Yeah. So. See? I don't know, but I'm gonna have fun trying it out and testing. Yeah, I bet you will. <laughs> <laughs> did uh, did did your friends get into that on you yet, or no? No, 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 no. They didn't and they find it. <laughs> Guess what, guys? You lost. <laughs> this one's all mine. Oh my God. Anyway, folks, that's our take on Carrera. We will give you really quick, quickly. Uh, let me give you the ins and outs. Uh, it is coming out of uh, 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 a small distillery. Seven brands come out of there. Uh, one of them is Frida Kahlo, 1465. It is out of Arandas, and uh, to my knowledge, and what we've discovered here, it is Eduardo Camarena, which uh, would be five generations of tequila producers, and there are five now. Um, and this is the, the family, the Camarena family that settled Arandas. Uh, they're one of the founding, founding families. And this one's called Carrera. Uh, it is a brand of promise nominee, hands down, and everything Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, from, from from marketing uh and 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 uh and the packaging to the to the juice inside it is amazing this is the next best thing the next big thing right here for for you guys who are friends and and fiends and fans of camarena this is it right here you're missing this one needs to go in your library because you'll you'll get the full spectrum of the way these guys think and live their life by adding this to your library right here amazing what what do we know about stuff. about what did you say about price point on this one like 60 bucks the anejo's approach is 60 now again i'm looking at some online stuff so i don't know if that factors in delivery fees or taxes that, that don't come into it but the price point on all of these has been between the low 40s and and the anejo has been pretty consistent around 60. okay well, I, I say worth every penny. I don't don't even argue. Uh, just just if you can find it, go get it. If you're yes, watching yes. us on, on YouTube or any of the uh, other platforms, uh, please subscribe. First of all, hit that you know hit the notification bell, give us a like because that helps us on the on the algorithm. But what you're doing, if you're have if you've had it, leave us a comment, let us know, uh, and you know again. Go get it. This is this is stellar. It's just stellar. This is the next big Unless thing. Unless the Camarena family. Yeah, I, 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 I'm. We're when when we make our big trip, our big tequila aficionado trip. This has got to be a stop. Even if we have to hike, we got to you know we got to we gotta get four by fours to get there. Uh, we're 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 gonna invade this distillery because you got to find out what the secrets are uh, in this place. Uh, open air fermentation. Uh, they tell you everything you need to know on the back of the label. Okay, everything. And their material, their marketing material they sent us was completely transparent from the Blanco to the Repo to the Añejo. Uh, they're not hiding a damn thing. They do have a Cristalino, which we did not get. Uh, it's a Reposado. Reposado Cristalino. Yeah. yeah, Reposado. I want, you know what? I want to taste it. I know that there's a kind of a there's a some controversy on the on the cristalino like why bother uh but i gotta tell you it's uh now from what i understand this is also uh 
It's won some hardware from San Francisco World Spirits. They gave it a bronze. Really? Oh my God! They only silver. Really? From I don't want to know what they who got gold or silver. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. Stone oven, stone brick oven, baked. Eduardo Camarena, chief executive officer. Um, this this is a gem, folks, and it deserves your attention. Uh, screw the medals. They're, those guys don't know what they're doing. Right. Uh, this is this is old school. It's traditional. It's the way tequila should be made. A uh, brand promise nominee, and and you know. We'll find out at the end of 2022 if it if it holds the water. But uh, right now, this is it right here. Uh, you've been watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our channels and networks. I'm Mike Morales in Southern California. That guy out there is? Johnston in Youngstown, Ohio. Thanks again for watching. Whatever you do, folks, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs>